The once obscure Canadian psychologist has been gaining traction ever since he voiced out his contempt for transgenders after he refused to refer to any student by their chosen pronouns. He's been in the limelight for reasons good and bad. While some are staunch followers of his philosophies and teachings about life, others strongly disagree with his way of the world and in fact deem it dangerous. Let's look at both sides of the coin today. First off, protesters gather outside Jordan Peterson's recent show in Sydney to condemn his teachings. Peterson's shows are received in an oddly contrasting manner. On one hand, his 12 Rules for Life and Antidote to Chaos tour in 2019 was so well received that it added more dates on demand, but on the other, the shows were met with protests against the lifestyle preacher's teachings. This new leg of shows in Sydney expand on his previous discussions and featured discussions of overcoming difficulties in life and self-improvement, among many other topics. The protesters gathered outside a Ware Super Theater on December 3rd while Peterson's show was going on to raise their voices against his far-right fascist ideologies. The protest was organized by a community activist group that goes by the name of Campaign Against Racism and Fascism. The event was chaired by Siobhan Batari, who spoke out in disagreement with the internet celebrities' conservative and backwards politics that targeted gender minorities. His ideas are considered more and more dangerous as he gains a larger audience of devout followers who, much like Andrew Tate's fans will blindly listen to everything he says. Not only are the ideas being proposed harmful to say in a social setting, but they're also said in an offensive style using derogatory language. According to Batari, these bigots say that ordinary people, women, LGBTQIA people, are the oppressed and are scum and have no place in society. Aside from the fact that his comments have a negative impact on a chunk of society that's already mistreated, any sort of harmful comments about people shouldn't be advocated in front of crowds of people who may be easily swayed by them. What's more, the protesters aren't the only ones who disagree. While it may be easy to overlook the opinions of the minority or the protesters, it might be much harder to ignore the words of someone, like the University of Sydney's incoming Global Solidarity Officer, Deaglin Godwin. He joined the protesters to criticize Peterson's bigotry and identification with hard-right evangelical Christianity. Godwin believes that the one surefire way to deal with the problem at hand is to oppose the far right by mobilizing a group that acts on principles that completely contrast those of Peterson. This may open his followers eyes to a left-wing alternative for the dystopia that Jordan Peterson describes. The psychologist talks have garnered a fascist following that retaliated to protest by doing Hitler salutes. This is exactly the kind of attitude that Godwin is trying to act against in order to make sure that neo-Nazis can't engage in such damaging behavior where they pay homage to the most dangerous political leader the world has seen, in broad daylight, Godwin responded to Peterson fans who did a Hitler salute during the protest. The left has to rebuild a better culture that drives these people away. It is essential for the betterment of society to keep people from protesting against lockdowns or trans and abortion rights. Time and time again, he stressed on the importance of unity and collectivism in the face of such fascist revivals. He tried his best to inspire the crowd by bringing attention to the importance of coming together to fight against the mainstream right in order to stop them from speaking out against the right to be exploited and oppressed. Let's see what's brought such attention to Peterson's fascist campaign. Back in June, the 60-year-old psychologist was banned from Twitter on account of the transphobic comments he made about actor Elliot Page. He referred to the actor by his dead name and claimed that her breast had been removed by a criminal physician. He'd been warned about violating the rules posed by the social media app, which doesn't allow hateful conduct to spread, but Peterson defended his views still. In fact, he tweeted in response by saying he'd rather die than delete his tweet. Even after being suspended from the site, the Beyond Order author stood strong on his stance and defended his tweet once more by saying, up yours, woke moralists, we'll see who cancels who. The end of his suspension saw an increase in his transphobic comments with the addition of a highly conservative political stance. Top and bottom surgery have been referred to in tweets as propagandistic, and appalling euphemisms that go far beyond sickening into the world of radical evil. Owen Mardson Redford, another member of CA 
AARF also spoke out against Peterson's far-right politics. He was especially critical of the way the psychologist has pointed fingers at the oppressed for the crimes of the oppressor and blamed those who are disadvantaged by the system for the system's shortcomings. Echoing the beliefs of Godwin, he said that the left needs to stand up to those that support these ideas as each act of violence, however small, motivates people like Jordan Peterson. Up next, let's talk about how Peterson has a large following of staunch supporters. The 12 Rules for Life author's constant indiscretions on social media and podcasts surprisingly don't keep him from amassing a huge following. In the latest news, he's even signed a podcast deal with The Daily Wire. This kind of contradictory response makes people wonder why he's still famous and infamous. How does he continue to be relevant to people despite his obviously hate-filled comments on minorities? The answer is simple. Where he angers a group of people, he pleases another. Nicknamed Pied Piper Peterson by his haters, the motivational speaker's following has been called cultish on many occasions. This choice of words criticizes the way they listen to him without thinking twice about what he's saying. They agree blindly with his views and don't accept where he goes wrong. But what matters most is that they're exceeding in numbers. With 4 million followers on Instagram, 2.1 million on Twitter, 1.5 million on Facebook, and 5 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. That's not all of it. He sold millions of copies of his books as well. The following consists of a largely young, white male audience who feel under attack from woke people and cancel culture. He brings attention to their self-doubt, anger, and frustration with liberals. Now, why can't he be canceled? It seems that no matter what he says, Jordan Peterson cannot be canceled. Despite the fact that he remains under fire for his misogynistic comments, he doesn't lose relevance and just doesn't back down. The reason for this may be that Peterson has introduced something that's long been put aside in this day and age. In the social media that we live in today, Jordan Peterson, mixing social justice, religion, some liberalism, and some more classical ideas, has reintroduced to the world what some might call forgotten wisdom. If you were to debate with a follower of his, they'd bring up his expertise, the endless sea of knowledge he has access to, and yes, the wisdom he has. To them, he is nothing less than a guru. They've got a positive response for even the most obvious of his blunders. According to him, it takes a lot of courage to stand up for yourself when everyone is against you, and the fact that Peterson is so sure of himself is something they gain confidence from as well. In a world with undertones of misandry wherever you look, Peterson has created a space where young men can think freely, a space where men can analyze their life experiences in an unconventional way, without perhaps being labeled as a misogynist, an apologist, or another toxic male. For people that don't seem to fit in on either side of the spectrum, between the liberals and the conservatives perhaps, there is Jordan Peterson. Finally, are these reasons really valid enough to follow him? There is an undeniable contradiction at the center of Peterson's politics. His major concern is the way young men have lost their way and are shunned by a society that engages in liberalism. He feels so strongly for these men that talking about their issues moves him to tears most of the time. But what's interesting to note is that the issues he talks of aren't even caused by the people he blames for them. He brings up the smallest ways in which men can reshape their lives, be it cleaning their room or focusing on themselves instead of criticizing the world around them. And of course, he's a huge supporter of monogamy and child rearing, so much so that he believes it should be enforced. But instead of blaming the capitalist structure of society for hookup culture and lack of marriage in the younger generation, he points his finger towards feminism and the far left. These make his arguments seem underdeveloped and biased, which raises questions about their validity. And that's all for this video, guys. What do you think of Jordan Peterson's stance on politics? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.